came to you with a little mixed bag of things to go over to us tonight. This is an information, basically, only session. If you have some really pressing questions for Michael, I'm sure he'll answer them. Um, about the overview, we'd asked him to come in and talk to us about the trust funds that are under his control as we start to break down the trust funds and who has which funds and what the finance director does, what the uh, town treasurer does, what the trustees of the trust funds do. So tonight is, is Mike's time, but he has also, and I'm hoping that everybody has an audited financial sheet. Yep. And also the last sh couple of sheets that Mike sent out so he's going to talk to you tonight and most recent financials. So with that being said, Michael, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. One of the differences between municipal and private industry is that municipal deals with funds. It's literally called fund accounting. And I was asked to give an overview of what Hampton's funds look like how they work, who's, who has them, or whatever. What I've done is I put together a, a package. You should have approximately six sheets of paper. The front sheet should be the memo, and the back sheet should literally be um, the uh, audited financials. Um, financial summary. So if you hopefully have that. There you go. Because the front sheet and the back sheet it's going to work out very nicely because I'm going to talk we about the first part ones. and then we'll talk about the back. I got mine here. Okay. Yep. There you go. All right. Um, the first, once you pass the memo, the first sheet in lists out the funds that the town of Hampton has. Um, there are multiple types and I've tried to break down the types and there's a major heading with what we have and then the person or persons responsible for them. Coming down the left are the funds, the fund names, and then you can then cross-check. The first grouping, you'll find it all belong to the trustee of the trust funds. That's what the TOTF stands for, in the responsible group. You have trust funds, which are the poor trust, There's very little money there, library trust, cemetery trust, and then the real estate trust. I make mention of the real estate trust because um, that one last year generated approximately $650,000 in income that went to the income grouping which basically is used to reduce the taxes. The next group are two small sections. You have the Cemetery Trustees and the Conservation Commission. Both of those are special revenue and um, they are dealt with by the treasurer. Then if you find the numbered funds starting with 10 down to 200, those are under my control for reporting purposes. All the money in this town literally belongs to the treasurer. Um, but I'm the person responsible for reporting of the activity. The, the number 10, the general fund, is a major fund in, in finance terms. It's literally where all the money resides. It's where we pay the bills, we pay the payroll. Everything else, when I pay a bill for a fund, I actually run it through the general fund and then it's an IOU between the two funds that I'm dealing with. So we have multiple transactions, but basically it comes as IOU, you owe me, and that's how we run the, the cash through. You have, the general fund is the major, then you have revolvers, the recreation, the cable committee, the police the details, and EMS. Those are the four funds that I report to you monthly in the financials. They're the last four pages. Revolvers basically collect their own income, collect their own expenses, and they pay out according to their designation of what they were set up for. And they continue on. They will have a continuing balance going forward. Um, then you have capital projects or construction projects, and we had four going on at this year. The wastewater treatment plant, which started up in 11, the fire stations were in 12, 
Church Street pumping station was in 12. And then we also had the beach infrastructure for the sewer. That was the leftover funds from the original project that was used to work on the west side streets that were um, completed, I believe, or worked on this year. And then finally, there's a couple special revenue, which is the recreation infrastructure. And that is where we accumulate the monies uh, from the parking lots. And then when Warren articles are written, we use these funds to pay for the Warren articles. And then finally, the police forfeiture is where we collect monies from um, gambling and drug forfeitures, and then they're used by the police department. If you're looking at the second page of the fund listings, you can see that I have tried to give you some notes in regards to the numbered funds. Um, the general fund currently has an unassigned fund balance of $4.8 million. I will get into that shortly. <sighs> Recreation, cable, police, EMS all have balances. That would Those are the current balances that tie out. The construction projects, the three big ones, I listed out the amount of debt that was being either uh, issued or would be issued. And you can see at the wastewater treatment plant, there's 1.33 million. Fire stations, 5.1 million. And Church Street pumping station, 3.8. Um, wastewater and Church Street are both SRF, which is state revolving fund. We're borrowing literally money from the state at a very favorable rate. Um, and the fire station, that debt actually was issued, and it is now in the 2014 expenses in the debt number. It accounts for a very large increase in the costs in this year's budget, 2014. Recreation infrastructure has 278,000. <coughs> there are two Warren articles that are outstanding. Right now, there's 49,000 from 12, which is dealing with Tuckfield, and then 90,000, which is dealing with the lights. All right. So basically, half that money is already uh, allocated to something else, and the police forfeiture right now has zero monies. Those are the notes in regards to the funds themselves. The next two pages is I just took these pictures out of the uh, report. You can see that it's pages 87 and 88. And it lists out the funds that are under the auspices of the trustee, the trust funds, what the principal amounts were, the income, and the ending in the market value. The majority of the money there's $20 million under their um, control. The majority of the money, almost $18 million, is the real estate trust fund. This money goes back to when the those properties, I believe, were sold years ago. This was put aside by a town meeting, and the income is uh, generated from the investments, and then it is deposited in the income statement. And that's what I was making reference to earlier. And you can see that under the income, under that fund, they generated $648,000 and 648 was expended, i.e. it was transferred to the town. That is the trustee of the trust funds. Any questions so far? I basically have just said, here are all the funds, who has them, and what they do, where they are, and I'm talking about the trustee of the trust funds, which is the top section. I'm always at the ready. I know I could have sat on the other end, but I'll <laughs> go ahead. Um, the uh, real estate trust fund that is uh, established by a town meeting has passed, and the revenue that comes from that, as a consequence of that Warren article, goes into the general revenue. Correct. Of the, okay. And items 10 through 200 are uh, labeled under the finance director's control. Um, which means you decide whether or not, I mean, you're the final decision maker, basically. No, no. In I terms of the disbursements, I mean. No. They're under the control, well, like the general fund. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that, is the, that is dictated by the budget. So that's the expense portion. And so, therefore, the managers, each manager is the determining factor in regards to how that, his portion of the budget would be spent. Mm -hmm. And then the warrant articles, those are determined by town meeting. I'm basically the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. I'm the reporter. The only sections that I have real control over are the finance and the MIS departments. 
other than as that. As a department head. As a department okay. head. But other than that, I don't really have control. The treasurer is the person who literally signs every check. I prepare them, and then they're authorized for disbursement, and then they're dispersed through her. So the treasurer is authorizing all disbursements, the town regardless of their source. The town, the the town is authorizing, i.e., through the town manager. He's the final say and authorizer of the expenditures, but she actually is the person to, to sign the check and disperse the funds. Right, that's the final authorization, and that's the treasurer's. Yes. Okay. And, but you, you cut the check, I assume, through a computer system. Yes. And uh, you don't make any decision in terms of when you're entering something, or you do, or you say, okay, you've got enough money in this line item, for example, or you don't, that kind of thing. You just, so there is some decision-making process that you go through, right? I review, I, I could say 99% of the invoices coming through the accounts payable system, I'm either looking at them before they go into the system, mm -hmm. but also I see every check when it comes out, I'm verifying that there is an account number, there is a legitimate invoice, there is if there's a PO required, that's there. Mm -hmm. And then there's authorizations, i.e., from the department manager, whatever level I need. Mm -hmm. If those pieces are there, then I process. I will then, I do not make a decision at that time whether or not that account is overexpended or not. Okay. That is the manager's realm. I then, as you have your monthly reports, I accumulate the, the costs and then present them to the selectmen and also the management group saying here are the monies that you have spent during the last period. And so it's there that they have their reconciliation. As happened this last year, the there were some li uh, major lines, I thought police or fire, <coughs> major lines. There were some major lines or even departments that were going to go over budget. They needed to go to the selectmen for their approval to allow that kind of overture. Mm -hmm. Because the dictate that I have, the town manager, is we shall never go over the bottom line. Otherwise, literally by law, I believe, he and I are both in trouble. But it's the managers also have that same dictate given to them by the selectmen. That mm -hmm. They will not go over their bottom line number. And so they must live within the budget. If they have an issue, then they need permission to take care of it. But with the budgets the way there are, there's very little room for overages in one department because the other departments need their funds also. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get some familiarity with the process, so mm -hmm. it's really a process that I'm, I'm primarily interested in. Um, the revolver funds, um, is that something that is set up as a, as a um, consequence of uh, warrant management articles. controls or a consequence of warrant articles? It's a warrant article and it's under a specific RSA. Okay, so all the revolvers are, I can find sourced in, yeah. a, in a warrant article somewhere. Yes. And the capital projects also, warrant article, all of them will always be found sourced from a warrant article, okay? And the special revenue funds? Those are set up normally through some kind of action of the town meeting. Also, the warrant article. Okay. Usually, yeah. So all of these I can find somewhere in the history of our warrant articles. Excellent. And, of course, the particular requirements of what they can be spent for all be in those warrant articles. And well, Roddy, you're aware of them, so you can prove them or process them appropriately. Now, when you say you cut these checks, I, I got implicitly from your statement that this is a monthly event. It's not like you cut we checks every day. Weekly. Weekly. Okay. Sir. So on a weekly basis, the time manager goes through this stuff and throws the holy water on it or not. And but only do you report to the select board of selectmen weekly as well or just monthly? No, monthly. Okay. Unless something happens on a week to week basis that requires their attention, I assume. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I, I don't have a few. I was just looking at the Mike. Is the when it comes to uh, incurring debt, the burden. Uh, the church, the fire stations are going to be hitting us in 214, as you said. Correct. What about the wastewater plant? Are we hitting it already? No. The the two projects that are SRF, the wastewater treatment plant, and also the Church Street pumping station, were not completed during the year 13, 
Therefore, okay. we've not made the final draw on the SRF, so therefore the loans have not been completed. They will be completed this year in 14, and the debt will start to be paid off in 15. 15, yeah. On both, Michael? Yes, ma'am. Well, we, have to, we won't pay them off. We'll just no, I'm sorry. Oh. The, it, they will be set up so that they will become part of the debt costs. We, we but you're going to be off. adding $5 million to your debt structure yeah. in this year. Yeah. That will start paying next year. Mm -hmm. right. So the wastewater plant, as well as the pumping station, it will be hitting us in 15. Correct. Now, the, the, the beach infrastructure, Mike, is that's the balance of a big, a big amount of money we raised at one time, and 16K that have to be, that has to be, that we decided that we're going to fix up some of those west side streets. There was, I, I don't have the exact number, but it was approximately six or seven hundred thousand dollars that was in that account. Yeah. We held on it for several years, yeah. waiting to see if we could do other things, and they decided to, and authorized to do the West Side streets that they could. Right. So what does that 16 represent? That's basically the leftover. I haven't, we haven't spent it yet. That's, <laughs> it's, that is minimal compared to what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of left, still left to be spent, if you will. Yeah. Okay. And the, uh, a couple of other things here. I want to tie this group up here. Um, Yeah, the big driver on the income on these trusts is the rec is the real estate trust fund. That's the big driver, and uh, comes from the sale of, of properties at the beach. Correct. I look at the poor trusts, and they're so small in value, and they s contribute so little in income. It's uh, has that ever been discussed as uh, possibly melting that in with some other? I trust? believe you'd find that they're not able to do that. That's my opinion. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're right; they generate very little money. I mean, is this but like you they're know, there for a reason? And we got a balance of five hundred dollars in one, you know, and throwing off twenty bucks a year or something. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, I don't really have anything else on this, Mike. Thank you. I don't have any questions for Mike on this issue. I do like the four point eight five, Mike. I figured we would go over the last page. I figured we'd deal with what, what I've talked about there, and we'll get to the last page, which is. That's also going to raise some questions, probably. Yeah. The only question I had is, um, following up on that, with the um, you not being in uh, the wastewater and the pump until 2015, do we receive any penalty or like that, or is there any liability because we haven't done anything with the money? We w well, SRFs. What we do is we expend. We we have been paying for the construction. I'm just going to use the. Um, Church Street. We've been paying for the construction up to $3 million. And periodically, we will then go to the state and say, we have spent a $1 million in the last 6, 8, 10 weeks. And they review all of the invoices, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then they reimburse me. In essence, they're issuing debt at the time. But it's only until the final time and the amount of money that we've drawn will actually the debt be said, okay, we now have a final number. This is where we're starting from. You now owe us in one year payments on this. So there is some time limits, yes, but we are not we have not gone past them. They have to be finished this year. Okay. Thank you. You can go on. No questions? I'm all set. I have a question on the real estate trust. Mm -hmm. When is it and when is it not advantageous for the town to borrow from the in income part of that trust? We've, we've looked at that and basically we would have to re be replacing or paying back the monies at their, there's a set rate and we found it to be disadvantageous. Uh, the rate that we would have to pay to borrow money from them has always been higher than we can go out and either get it through uh, bonds or the state, so we have not. We looked at it every time. We have never wanted to borrow from them. It costs too much money to do it. They're probably getting five percent on the trust, maybe six. Who knows? Seven. Yep. And so he, he can buy, and that's what we. That's what they would be charged, five or six yeah. or seven. Yeah. Yeah. So he's going to go out and get that it for back to the trust. So at some point it becomes a zero sum game. Not really, no. because if I'm paying out. 6% to the trust, yeah. and I can borrow the money at 3%, right. mm -hmm. I'm saving 3% of the money. The trust is still making it 6%. So therefore, I'm paying 3 and they're making 6 and they give me that money every year. 
So, in essence, why would I pay six to them? Give me six. It is a it is a net loss when you when you when I'm borrowing from them at a higher rate. But the money you're paying in the form of interest back to that trust increases the principal value of that trust, which is the town's money. But I've drawn the principal down. Mm -hmm. So it's in essence, right? If you have, a, I'm going to use ten million dollars. You have ten million, and I borrow a million. Mm -hmm. All right, they only have nine. They only make money on nine now. Right. And I'll pay them the six percent. Mm -hmm. So I pay it back. But if they have the ten and they're making 6% and I'm paying only 3 over here they're making their money I'm paying a lot less interest we look at it every time but it's never been to our favor to do it that, that's come up before we, we pushed on that at least once or twice yes. um, anyway what do you do? I'm set Mike, on that real estate trust fund, that has been built up over the years from the sale <coughs> of leased property. Correct. If there are any additional sale, uh, what is the the rental or the the town receives from whatever properties are left, mm -hmm. the lease those through those leasing agreements, does that go into the general fund or does it go into the real estate trust fund? General fund. It just goes into the general fund. And then it's determined somewhere along the line whether we're going to invest that money no, into the no, trust. No, no, it just stays there. If you'll notice, you'll notice if you run down the, the under the principal, the middle column additions. Right. It was one hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars additions. Right. I believe that there was a sale this year of leased property. So therefore, that amount of money, since it was the sale of the leased property, mm -hmm. goes into the trust fund. Right. And now they'll earn money on that. Oh, right. What I've done, though, is I've lost the rental income, the lease, yeah. for the town. So it's, you've gained it to put it into the trust. I've lost it as part of the, the lease income. Right, so the sale of the properties goes into this trust, trust fund. Yeah. Yes. The rental that we have been gathering over the years on that property goes into the general fund. Correct. All right, that's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, by Warren article, from what I understand, the only way you can grow the principal of that fund is by generating revenue from the sale of real estate. Least, 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 least. Right. Yes. Sale of real estate. There's no other way to grow the principal on that fund. No. And no. any revenue that comes from that fund must, at the end of the year, be given to the general revenue fund. It actually comes out monthly, but yes. Oh, it comes out monthly? Yes, okay. it does. Okay. So, you know, that's the mechanism. What is the interest rate of return on the currently leased land that the town owns? Um, I would have to get back to you on that. Um, but it's it's not only do you get leases, it's actually taxable. So you're getting it twice. Well, if you own the land, you'd be getting the tax right. return. Right. And if you're getting $170,000 on about $8 million worth of leased land, no, that no, that was that was that was a, a sale of leased land in this year. I it's not. It has nothing to do with the income of the leases. I thought you said the income for the year was a, about. It, 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 I'm sorry, the addition to the fund was $171,000, and that came about by selling some of the leased land. What was the Income return on the leased land, you know. Um, currently, the budget for the land rent, which is what we're talking about, is 160,000, and we've actually booked 167. So that would probably that's going to be the amount of money that you'll get during 20. 14. And the town owns approximately eight million dollars of leased land. Is that a fair statement? I would have to. I would have to say I don't know. My concern would be that the return on that is much less than the real estate trust return. That's very probable. Do, do we have? Uh, my understanding, we have some sort of contractual commitment to sell leased land to those who are leasing it 
if they want to. If they want to buy it. Which is why you generated some income. And we can't sell it to anybody else. Yeah. So when a transaction occurs, is really not in a decision the town can make, really, is it? No. So uh, leases aren't forever. Whenever those leases no, no, they're expire. perpetual. The town it can either forever. renew it or sell it. As long as the people live there, it's forever. Is it? Is it, Mike? Or is it 99 years? Well, it's a 99 year lease. That was that. No, no, that's, no, the old was, that's the old. That was the yeah. old lease. That's when my understanding was that we had. There was the Hampton Beach Leasing Company or yeah. the Land Trust, yeah. and, and they improved. they had it and they had it for 99 years. Yeah. It's when they came when it came back to the town was to when the, the town. leased property was then started to be sold right. to the then occupants, and yeah. that's what generated the trust fund. Yeah, but how? What's the current state of affairs of leases? Is it for are they perpetual leases like the mentioned? It, I, would, I would have to ask, but I have to believe that as long as they're paying their rent, I guess they, right. we're not going to throw them off. My also, there was just a certain group that were 99 years. The yeah. Hampton Beach Improvement right. District. The original, right? Yeah, Hampton, Hampton Beach, Beach Improvement years. District. That's right. Yeah. And that was the 99 years went to the Hampton Beach Improvement District. Right. right. When they expired, that went away. Yeah. And the town got the land back. Re re right. Return got the land back, but there are other, there are other groupings of leased land owned by other people other than the HBIC. Well, no, 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 no. they went away. They're gone. They've been long gone now. No, no, they are. Their ninety-nine years ended. No, no, the ninety-nine years have gone. Yeah, so they're they're totally out of the picture. They don't even exist anymore. But what happened was when the land reverted back to the town, the town is now the the the, uh, the landowner without. Uh, a lien on them without a lease associated with them. So they, cr the town themselves created a policy by which they issue leases to those who are currently occupying the right. land. And in those leases, as I understand it, Mike, please correct me if I'm wrong, but they, there's a right of renewal uh, for those leases by, by those who hold those leases. So again, it's really the, the occupier, essentially, of the land that decides whether or not he wants to renew the lease, whether or not he wants to buy the land, up to them really to decide if they if my understanding is if if the occupant sells not the land but the property right then the new person automatically gets a new lease written and normally I believe the terms are increased or more favorable to the town every time we renew mm -hmm. to a new owner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. how do they set those rates I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> I, <I'm laughs> I haven't heard one thing about that. I'm, I'm, I'm talking years. about funds tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe the selectmen actually set, I have set never that. Heard them no, talk I, about I've heard them discuss it. In the past, yeah, but so. I believe they are. It's a set formula. Right. They they do it via formula. Yeah. yeah. As a matter of policy, not not law. Right. 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 Is that a better question to set on the uh, trustees of the trust funds? No, actually, I believe that would be more in the realm of the legal office here in town. Yeah. Thank you. That's who writes the leases, or at least it's generates all, the legal. It's all found within the lease itself. Yes. All of this stuff. Yeah. So that that's on the rent of town property, Mike. Is that where that is? Mm -hmm. The uh, thirty-five or thirty-two account land yes, sir. rent and franchise fees. Where is that? that? Is that where it is? Yep. It looks like three hundred ninety thousand in there for the budget for this year. Yes, but that's the franchise fee is paid quarterly, but the land rent, basically the bills have gone out. That's why you're booking 167. So you. that's a that's a one I one deal. Okay, I just want to make sure I knew where that was. <coughs> okay, Mike, before we go on to the audited financial sheet, we just have one question on cemetery trustees and conservation commission. That is totally under the treasurer. The I've listed it as under the treasurer. I'm I know the conservation is the cemetery trustees. There's minimum dollars in there. Yeah, I know. And I believe I believe that it's under the auspices of the treasurer. It could be under the cemetery trustees, but it, it's like I said, it's minimal dollars. We're we're talking very few dollars. I'd have to check that one out even further. But not a lot of money. No. But control and how things pass through. So is this passing through anybody or is this going directly to the treasurer? Um, I, I will not, I cannot speak to the cemetery trustees. I can talk about the conservation commission. That money is, is sent through and is held by the treasurer. Okay. And it's the treasurer that 
issues the checks as opposed to yourself. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's by state statute. Mm -hmm. For some of you that are new, you may want to. We, we came up on this this year in a, in a different kind of way on who reports to who for what. And on this one, it was a little eye opener for us, too. That it, it'll be in the budget, but it won't be handled as other things are. Could I make a differentiation in? This in that under the trustee of the trust funds, there is cemetery trusts, mm -hmm. and there is approximately five hundred thousand dollars in that. This is not the account I'm talking about. Right. When I'm talking about the cemetery trustees, there's like twelve thousand okay. dollars. That's all I, I'm telling you. There's very little money in that account. So it's not their operating. No. Okay. No. no. Just, just so this. that's what I'm delineating here is whether this is straight to the treasury even as far as the operating account but now is that the same story with the conservation commission or is that the conservation commission money is being held by the by the treasurer okay. and that's generated by the warrant article for the ten thousand dollars this year and last year um, the uh, money is generated by the current use to get the first ten thousand and then also whatever the differential in their budget, they get 100% of the budget. If they s don't spend 100%, then they get differential sent over to the trust, the, to the treasurer also. That's the point that I, that I think we need a little clarity on. Uh, that's that is that the conservation fund is not in the budget. Okay, The conservation fund exists separately from the budget. This is under state statute. And we issue them a budget because we choose to. That is to say, we, the oh. legislative body, which is also known as a town meeting, and we give them so much money in a given year, and if they don't spend it all, it gets swept into the conservation fund. It does not go into the general fund of the town. We're trying to clarify that. And they can use money. that conservation fund for any purpose any relative purpose to the Conservation Commission's activities. I have no According comment. According to state statute. I have no comment on that. But you would not dispute that, right? I still have no comment on that. <laughs> well, I'm, I was just not to put him on the spot for that, but just to, like I say, delineate where the budget ends and the trust funds yeah. begin. And unfortunately, it's become more political than statutory when it's clear in the statutes. And it's unfortunate that some people see it as political and put pressure on certain people so that they can't speak freely. Yeah. But that's life. Please. We'll go on from here. Great. I would draw your attention to the last page, which I'm calling the audited financials, the financial summary for 2013. I have gone over this in my notes, which is on the front page, but I will talk you through it. But I felt that having the notes would then give you something to refresh yourself if you have questions in the future. All right. So basically, the financial summary, um, this lists the year's activities in the general fund. And that's what this is, is the general fund. It's the number 10. The income and the departmental or the warrant article expense lines are shown with an arrow. So when you have these financial statements in your hand, if you were to look at last year's, they will be close to this. But you will find that the general fund income was $7.7 .7 And then we had departmental expenses of 24.4, And then warrant articles were 645000 So there's the tie-in between what my monthly financials are and what I'm talking about here in the income and expense statement. So now what I'm going to do is walk you down. This is this is literally is how you get from one point to another. But you have your income, you have your expense, and then in essence it's owner's equity or retained earnings. But here we call it uh, unassigned fund balance. It, it really feels the same. Going into the year. Yeah. Out of here. So in the income section, we 
asks for, in essence, $18 million worth of property tax. We also, at the same point, when we were doing the um, setting of the tax rate, we added $726,000 in what we call the overlay. The overlay is the additional money raised to pay the current and future abatements. So, we had property taxes of 18, we added another 726. This literally goes on your tax bill. The ab actual abatements, which is the second star, were $250,000 in 2013. That's the average and the normal amount that we see. 100000 approximately is for the sewer abatements, and then the rest are the other abatements being... Military, age... No, 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 no. That's an those exemption. Are, those, no, those are, those those are, are exceptions, not right? abatements. This is someone comes and says you that... You assessed me wrong. Correct. My assessment is wrong, so I want my taxes abated. Okay. So if you did not raise something in the overlay, you know that I need $18 million in tax revenue, but if you give away 250000 I'm coming up short. That's why the overlay exists. However, in 13, we asked for more than the normal. The normal is about 250. We asked for 726. The reason for that was that we have some very large utility-related appeals that are outstanding. Social control. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we know that we want to make sure we have enough money in the contingency fund to cover what we think we can lose in court, in essence, yeah. in appeals. So I wanted to bring the contingency fund up, and so we raised more money in the overlay. That's dot one. Dot two is the normal. But dot the three dots down in the below the expense section is the $463,000 that we've added to the contingency fund. So, in essence, we raised 726, we spent 250. The difference we put off to the side for future um, court cases in regards to the utilities. And so the, the overlay is really a discretionary? Correct. It's, it's there to serve as a buffer to accommodate uh, abatements? Yes. Okay, thanks. Yep. Um, I already discussed the $7.6 million in the general fund that was raised as income, and then we had a small $75,000 withdrawal from capital reserve. This is just the accounting portion of when we made the switch for the cable committee from a special revenue to um, the revolver. We needed okay. to close one out and then start Remember one that, So yeah. it was, we crisscrossed $75,000 in the books. That's all that was. So total income came in at $26 million. Then departmentals were $24 million, Warren Article 645. And so we basically spent for expense 25.1. We had excess income this year of $1.3 million. However, there's the 463000 I was talking about that I'm pushing off in the contingencies. That $26,000 is the difference in the encumbrances between one year and the next. They only increased by 26. So when you get to the bottom line, we had excess income of $800,000. This is what we are going to add to the undesignated or unassigned fund balance. Last year we had, at 12, we had 4.0 million. You add the 800,000, you now have at the end of 13, you had $4.8 million in the fund balance. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot of money. But I ask you to look at what the DRA suggests the minimum undesignated fund balance retainage would be 5%. That's $2.8 million. The GFOA, which is the Government Financial uh, Office Association, suggests 8%. And these are the minimums they're talking about. That's $4.4 million. Why do you have a fund balance? Well, when we have cash flow, we're raising taxes for the school, the precinct, 
the um, county, the town, right? We pay or collect all the money, and then we have to pay it out. The schools get their money, whether I have any money or not. Yep. The county gets its money, whether we have any money or not. <laughs> the beach precinct, we're going to send that money. So it comes down to is that we are dependent on the taxpayers, in essence, to pay their tax bills so that we have cash flow. Yeah. At any one time, and I looked at the number at the end of 13, we had over $3 million worth of receivables. We had people who owed us tax money. I need, I need that $3 million. <laughs> so this, in essence, is the buffer. The undesignated fund balance is the buffer for the balance sheet. Mm -hmm. If they owe me $3 million, where, and if I have to pay it out, I'm going to have to borrow it with what they call a tax anticipation note, which is a TAM, and it costs money. In the past, when I first got here, the cost associated with TANs was horrendous. Yeah. Horrendous. It was sixty, seventy thousand dollars I believe, yep, I remember up that. there in that number. But the balance in the designated, undesignated fund balance, unassigned fund balance, was very, very low. We have been able to build up over the last five or six years to the level we're at. Yeah. which has allowed us to basically keep the TAN borrowing to a minimum. Yep. This year we did borrow $1 million, which sounds like a very, very large number, but when you figure that I'm running 50, 52 million through here, it's relatively small. And it was for timing purposes only, because I was waiting for tax revenues for the first half of the year. Am I wrong, Mike, in thinking that the proper, the minimum proper balance uh, for the undisputed fund balance is actually enough money so that we don't have to do any tan borrowing at all. That would be my, I would like to be at that level, yes. Right. And obviously we still haven't accumulated enough money for that yet. Well. Since we're still doing tan, I guess, in the springtime, basically, right? Yep. And it's timing, it's literally <coughs> timing between how much money am I right. spending <coughs> and the receipt of taxes. Mm -hmm. But the level we have here has made it possible for us to keep that to a minimum. Additionally, Remember I was talking, we were talking about the SRF money, the Church Street. Mm -hmm. We use the town's money to pay those bills before they give us the money back. So there's another, when you have construction projects, that's another outflow that I have to cover until I can get the borrowing right. in. So we're anticipating we'll have to do a tax anticipation note borrowing again in the spring or this year. And that tells me that we still don't have enough in our unreserved fund? We, we have applied for and will receive an tax anticipation notes to the for, uh, $4 million. But my hope is that where we've slowed down on the construction, we might be able to get through this year with none. That's my hope. Yeah. But it should be, it should be minimal um, the other thing about borrowing money on TANs? Well, it's very expensive, and that's why I think minimal when it comes to TAN is zero. That's minimal. Yep. That's what it ought to be, what it needs to be. Yep. And I'm glad you agree with me on that. Absolutely. Or we, I agree with you, rather. <laughs> and we never had more than, Mike, even, I don't recall ever having more than six million in uh, surplus. Did we have more We've never that? been up this high. Yeah. No. This is, this is a good figure. This is, this is a, I believe, is very good level. Yeah. And we kept our tans down to the minimal. Uh, I mean, you're right. Some of the years were fifty, sixty thousand or more in expense, uh, interest expense. But uh, recently, uh, that's been there was, really there, was check. there was two years ago we had zero expense. Yep. We didn't borrow. That's right. So I think that's in control, really. Um, Got to keep it there, though. I have one question, and that deals with contingent. What's the effect of a change in contingencies, Mike? Can you explain that? That's a lot of money, 463. What's that? We, we estimate mm -hmm. at the time of um, the tax setting how much money we think we need to cover the abatements dealing with the court cases. Mm -hmm. And right now, the ones that we're dealing with are the utilities. Actually, we had these are round numbers. At the end of 12, we had 1.2 million dollars in contingency. This year, we needed, we believe, 
or 1.7. That's why the contingency, that's just the change. That's how much money I put away this year towards a contingency. The contingency fund right now is 1.6 something million dollars. And, and, and at the end of the year, if, <coughs> if we, let's say we spend half of that, does the, rest, the other half go back into the unassigned fund balance? Yes. What happens is this is a, this is one of those once a year things so that if we pay out abatements to the tune of $800,000, yeah. If you do the mathematics, what happens is it re it will fall as a negative number. It will reduce your un un designated fund balance. Okay, so that's in essence where it falls. It's cash flow, but that's where it falls. Then I would take the reserve. Since I don't need I don't need eight hundred thousand, I'll reverse that. So this time you would see I'm just using for example, you would see a positive eight hundred thousand dollars because that's the change. I'm going to make it go from one point six to eight hundred thousand. Yeah. The two should wash off, and that's the whole point of the contingency, is that you should have enough money to cover the abatements that you may or may have to pay out. We review that every year. Is that number reflective of the uh, the pipeline in the courts now? Yes. Okay, so that, that's, that's not a discretionary number. That's just a number that's in the pipeline. And we may be at maximum at risk for that amount. Is that a correct? It is our best estimate. Uh -huh. It's not necessarily the maximum. It's not necessarily the minimum. But it's our best estimate of what we believe we could be liable for. So I assume the attorney is, is, is actively involved in how these cases are going to go out and advising. Uh, and also, this is number. this is reviewed heavily by the auditors, uh -huh. and um, the assessor, the auditors, myself, and legal. I'm sure everything's up to snuff. I just want to know what the general sense of how how we calculate the number is, and it sounds like it's like it's the stuff that's in the pipeline in the court system, but not 100 percent of what we're being sued for, so to speak, but the attorney's estimate of what we're... It's our best estimate of what... Worst case, what we're going to end up paying, basically. What we believe is the potential. Why, why wouldn't you uh, uh, balloon up the overlay and cut out the contingencies? The the increase in the overlay... Yep. Is how let's we... Say, let's, it, say, let's say you made that a million. Mr. Right? Zanoy? Yes. The, this is the, the mathematics. I needed to add some money to the to the contingency. Yes. Okay. I created that money by increasing the overlay. That's the funding mechanism. That's the income. And the increase in the contingency is the expense. Those two literally mate very nicely this year. It's do you understand what I'm saying? No. Okay. I needed to make the contingency bigger. Okay. Okay? I need to fund it somehow. Yes. So I charge the overlay. Okay. So the 726 has got the contingency baked into it. That's that's how I funded the contingency. Yes. You yeah, feed the contingency from the overlay. That's correct. And the overlay is something that you have to give to the DRA, I guess, when they're figuring out the taxes. Correct. So you got this is how much I want in property taxes, and add this much I got it. under the thing called overlay. Yeah. And that'll be the total amount that they calculate the tax rate on. Yes. And another question, could you list the pros and the cons of quarterly real estate tax billing? Um, I have seen more of the quarterly tax bills in towns that are on fiscal years versus the calendar, which is what we are. Um, I've just been reading about that. Uh, we looked at potentially going to a fiscal year here in town and mathematically I figured it out so that it would work. The problem was I ran out of money. What you need to do is you need to build up a reserve um, of basically six months of taxes and we did not feel that the town would want to to fund that much money. But um, what I've seen is that the typical quarterly bills are the towns that are in transition over a number of years, usually I think five years, that are going from the calendar to the fiscal. And this is how they're funding. They're really talking about there's five bills in four quarters, but you only pay four in a year. I, it sounds very confusing, but that's literally why you have that. There are costs associated with uh, generating bills. 
um, and then there's the collection of it, etc. And we basically would have to go, I believe, to the state for permission to do anything other than buy the biannual or the semi-annual. Did that was that confusing enough? No, what you said, I can thoroughly understand. My second question would be, even though it's difficult, would getting there be worth going through the difficulty? To get to go to the fiscal year? Yeah. From this conversation, literally happened within the last few weeks between all the financial officers in in the state. We have a listserv so we can ask questions. And the majority of the towns that have gone to the fiscal year have been satisfied. Some of them made it, it was difficult to get there um, with the cash flow for the, for the taxpayers, etc. Um, there was none that wanted to undo it, but they still are in the minority. I find that where we have our calendar year and the school is on a fiscal year, we end up the year where we owe them basically half of their year's money. And it has, because we have enough in the content in the undesignated fund balance, that the cash flow is pretty, pretty well worked out. And I have not seen the impetus to want to go to the fiscal. It also has ramifications in regards to when you hold your town meeting. Um, you would not be holding it in March. You'd probably be holding it in May. So there are some towns saying they thought it would be great to have it later because the snowbirds would be back. They found that their their attendance actually got worse in regards to the voting. Um, so that that didn't really pan out either. Um, How did the delivery sessions attendance change? Did you take note of that? Um, no, I did not see that specifically. But it would be uh, it would be delayed. Also, I believe is when um, I'm talking a delivery session mm -hmm. is really when it's talking. Um, one of the advantages is that when you pass the budget, then you know what you're starting the fiscal year with. Right now, no, I start the fiscal year, and I have no idea. No, you know, I have a good idea. It's either going to be this or this. But I really don't have a good idea of what the budget's going to be. So we we talk conservatively, and say, okay, we will spend one twelfth of what we had last year. But they can go right to the town meeting in the delivery session, and here I'm expecting twenty five million. It's either twenty five or twenty six. I'm just using numbers. And they come along and they say, well, we don't we don't want twenty five. We want twenty four. So I'm now I have really in essence overspent my budget for the first three months because I didn't know what it was. So yes, there's an advantage that way. Um, and I think for... Well, there's the other side of that too, and that is that the, the, uh, the legislative body, that is to say the voters in town meeting, are actually faced with a question of approving a budget in which expenditures of approximately 25% have already occurred. Well, the problem is when we tried to do this about, was it three or four years ago? Yeah. We realized that about year three, we were six months short of money for the schools. We said, uh, that's, now, who's, that's got, who's got this money, pray tell? And we said, we, we backed it out right the last minute because we knew right, we were going to be uh, mm -hmm. SOL. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's literally what happens is that you need to build up six months of your funds and we did and not specifically for the schools yeah. yeah which is yet another reason why growing that fund balance is so important so that we can afford to to to, to go to a fiscal thing without having to go to a quarterly billing or, or any other kind of gymnastics there's, there's really not enough money you would have no no but when you figure out that six months of 50 million is 25 right for four well right now we have hope <laughs> <laughs> Oh, right now, right, right, now, right now, what we have <laughs> makes what we're doing work. Right. Mm -hmm. And another problem that you have to remember, Mr. Jones, is that this is taxpayers' money right. that belongs in their billfolds, not the towns. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Pierce. The point is well taken. Okay. 
Anyone else on the side of the table? No. Michael, thank you. Are there any other questions that <coughs> I'm not prepared for? <laughs> <laughs> Even if you didn't come prepared for some of them, you gave us some very good answers. That was very educational, Michael. I thank you greatly for it. Thank you. Um, I was always prepared. <laughs> I want to tell you that um, I have enjoyed my six years here, eight, eight years here. Um, I've learned things every every day, and I'm just glad I can share what I've learned with you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Very much. Yeah. Michael. Thank you, yeah. Mike. Have they found a replacement yet? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank all right. And we do have we do have um, interviews coming up, um, but I offered and and it was accepted that I have a a um, consulting agreement with the town, and I will hopefully be able to help the next person transition or at least fill in part time for some period of time until they find the replacement. Good. Okay. That's why I said I might show up again. Thank you. 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 Thank you.